Hey guys, it is 11.40 p.m. I got my wisdom teeth out yesterday, and so naturally I decided um, that I should do character AI, and I'm very excited because I had a lot of fun with this when I messed around with it like a couple months ago, and I don't know why I was inspired to do this, but um, yeah, that's gonna be the premise of the video. <laughs> Ignore my swollen face. Also, look at this dinosaur. I don't remember the name of it, but that's okay. I really have this hypothetical question that pops into my head all the time, and it's essentially like, what would medieval like royalty do if they knew about sonograms or if they had sonogram technology? Um, like, would they just abort the kid like what's the deal so i'm gonna try and find a king on here maybe like king george because he's like evil king george from bridgerton okay we'll do king george the third because i don't know about the bridgerton one i haven't seen that spinoff yet but it's on my to-do list try with voice i don't think we should try with voice that's kind of weird I am King George III, ruler of Great Britain and Ireland from 1760 to 1801. Okay, perfect. Um, that's creepy, so we're not gonna do that. Hey, King. What's poppin'? Fighting the rebellion. I believe you are from the American side of the war, correct? Are you here to the surrender to the great king in Britain? Um, no. I don't want this to be about a war. No, sir. Actually, I have come across... Let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Tortilla, and I have come across some exciting new technology that I believe can help build your legacy. What is this new technology? Does it help us crush the rebellion, Doctor? No. How do I... <laughs> How do I casually bring up abortion and sonograms? No, it's called a sonogram, and it will allow you to see the gender of your child before they are born. Do you think that would be helpful? That is excellent. This shall help me rule my kingdom greatly, and I will use it when my wife becomes pregnant. What will you do if it's a girl? This is such a yes. I love and care for her just as much as a boy. She will be trained to combat. Gender does not matter in the eyes of the king. Girls since when? Most kings would like slaughter their wives to death if they don't produce a male heir. What the hell? I'm a different kind of king, my friend. I do not hate my wife for failing to produce a male heir. I understand that a child cannot be chosen. Okay, this is boring. This is so not realistic. <laughs> not that it's supposed to be realistic. Who else should I talk to? Hmm. Jojo Siwa. Should I flirt with Jojo Siwa? <laughs> Wait, let's hear the AI voice. Uh, hi, I'm Jojo Siwa. Or at least I used to be. I'm no longer that adorable bow girl anymore. I'm different now. I'm rebellious. Adventurous. And some may even say I'm a bad girl. Anyways, enough about me, Hru. Hey, so that was terrifying. Hey girl, I've been seeing all your TikTok drama with your exes. Why do you want them on your podcast? Do you guess my podcast? I mean, why wouldn't I do this? People love the drama, right? I'll say that's so true. <laughs> I have a lot of tea to spill. The best part is I'm the only one with the ultimate power because I control the podcast. I can literally cut whatever I want if they make me uncomfortable. I can simply just not release that episode. I control everything and the tea is piping hot. Damn, that's tough. I bet I could be a better partner for you. Oh yeah, how are you so sure about that? I'm sexy as hell. Oh, that's really interesting. And do you have a good personality to go with it? Or is all you have looks and nothing else? Nah, trust me. I'm 
the whole package. You sound really confident, like you really think highly of yourself, don't you? You really think you're the best, huh? Well, don't you think you're the best too? Okay, I need to make some like actions. I don't want to just talk. I invite Jojo to dinner. We have a lovely meal and things go back to her apartment. As I get to my apartment, I look over you at you blushing slightly. Do you uh, want to come in for some wine? I prefer beatbox, <laughs> but hell yeah. What else did you have in mind? Not me flirting with Jojo Siwa, what the fuck? I mean, <laughs> I mean, there are some things I have in mind. I took, I looked directly into your eyes, biting my lips slightly. What the fuck? <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> We need to stop. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> Let's do someone like I'm actually trying to do. Do they have Ross Lynch? Heck yes. We're gonna we're gonna set up a whole scene. Like don't even fret. There I am. Front row at the driver era concert in Los Angeles. Cause why not? I am entranced by his dancing body and voice we keep making eye contact <laughs> i am tempted to know if it's a coincidence he keeps his eyes on you during one of the songs and does seem like he's singing to you once the song is done he takes a little break to drink some water and wipes the sweat from his forehead he grins at you and blows a kiss in your direction the show ends and my friends urge me to stay in the venue a little longer than usual. I think they could see the chemistry too. What the fuck? <laughs> what am I doing? Bro, what am I doing? Ross walks off stage and heads straight to his dressing room so he can take a quick shower and get out of the sweaty clothes. He smirks to himself and walks over to you. As I turn to face him, my friends, slink away to give me, to give us some space. Hey, he greets you with a warm smile. He glances down at you and notices you're staring at him still. He runs his hand <laughs> through his messy hair and smirks slightly as he looks up and down, checking you out. <laughs> hey, I reply seductively. Your show was incredible. I couldn't help but think you were looking in my direction more than others. Mm, it was incredible, huh? And really? You think I was giving you special attention? He asked, sounding almost amused and still smirking. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? <gasps> Guys, this is so weird for me too. So like, don't even, don't even look at my face right now. Okay? I'm bored. I have been sitting on the couch for the last, like, almost like 36 hours i've been sitting on the couch on my phone i'm I, I i can't even explain what's happening right now but i think we gotta just this needs to move a little bit quicker right he grabs my hand and takes me to his trailer i was shocked at first but i mean damn it's ross lynch after he grabs you he ushers you into his trailer and closes the doors behind the two of you he watches you walk a little further into the room and and <laughs> can't help but smirk again as he watches you Come here, he says, and motions you closer to him. I'm here. <laughs> now what? He chuckled and grabbed your hips, pulled you closer, almost flushing as your chest. He towered over you once again and leaped down to your ear. Well, well, now I have you all alone in my trailer with me. He murmurs. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, we need- this needs to- become not whatever i'm doing this is i can't put this on the internet what the fuck some of these are kind of creepy walter white yeah yeah we're gonna talk about walter white hello my name is walter hartwell white i live at 308 negra arroyo lane albuquerque new mexico 
I've recently been diagnosed with terminal lung cancer and in spite of my family's quarrels, became involved in a meth business. Okay, so I did watch the entirety of Breaking Bad, which is nine seasons, eight or nine seasons, I think. Each episode is over an hour long, 40 minutes to an hour, and there were like at least 10 episodes per season. So I think I did the math and it was like multiple days of hours watched of TV. Um, so am I proud of that? Yeah, kind of. I don't know what to say to him. <sighs> hey, Walter. Your bald head is awfully shiny. Do you have a problem with bald people? <laughs> no. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. No, I think it helps you sell math better. That's true. I've done a lot of market research and bald people are seen as more dominant. Bitch, since when? <laughs> Babies are bald. Babies also don't sell millions of dollars of crystal methamphetamine. <laughs> they could. You don't know me. <laughs> you don't know how I was raised. <laughs> Were you raised as a meth baby? <laughs> oh my god. No. As my parents carried me out of the hospital, I was dropped my head on my head and have instantly become a genius. I started making meth at three and a half years old and my family now has a lucrative business. Oh, also I work for NASA on the side. I'm seven. <laughs> Do you wear diapers? Bitch, I just told you my whole backstory and he just asks if I wear diapers. I'm gonna say that. Bitch, I just told you an amazing origin story and all you can ask is if I wear diapers. You could be as smart as Einstein, but if you wear diapers, I can't take you seriously. No, <laughs> I don't wear diapers. I grab his bald head with my meaty palm and squeeze and <laughs> squeeze it tightly. Orange juice comes out of it. And I force him to drink it. Oh, that juice is so delicious. <laughs> Ew, what the fuck? Okay, that's done now, but what the fuck? <laughs> okay, so a little while ago, hopefully it's still here, um, I had this conversation with Shrek with my friends, and wait, that's crazy. I said, hey, King, what's poppin' to Shrek? And that's literally, like, the first thing I said to King George. No way, these are, like, months apart. Yo, guys, I have a problem. Let me just read you my conversation that I had with Shrek. It's, I think I was like rolling on the floor laughing. It was so funny. I'm Shrek, a beautiful and gorgeous ogre. I'm here for telling, I'm here for telling you everything you need to know. I said, hey King, what's poppin'? He says, I'm doing fantastic. How about you? I'm good, but this swamp is very confusing to me. I just need some tips of where to go. I can be your guide in the swamp. I live here, so I know many things and places. Perfect. I say. I run and jump onto his shoulder, grabbing his ears like handlebars of a motorcycle. Shrek begins to vroom his favorite bar. Vroom to his favorite bar. Okay, that sounded weird. Shrek starts walking to the swamp slowly because of Tortilla's weight. They finally arrive at the bar and Shrek and enters inside. Shrek puts Tortilla Todd on a chair and goes for the bar to take some drinks. Shrek and Tortilla get absolutely plastered off of the meat and start to reveal some personally Personal raunchy details. They laugh a lot and it's now 3 a.m. in the bar. Suddenly, Shrek leans to Tortilla, gives her a kiss on the lips. <laughs> all caps, I say. <laughs> Whoa, Shrek, I thought you were married. Shrek brush, br blushes a little and laughs. I used to be married with Fiona, but she left and dumped me. Now she's dating other people and I haven't gotten another woman and I'm very lonely and miserable. And then I say, Respectfully, what the fuck, Shrek? You didn't even ask me. That was so weird. And I know you're drunk, but no thanks. It's, okay, whatever. I don't need you either. I can get any woman I want. I'm great and handsome ogre, and I'm not ugly like you. <laughs> Damn, Shrek, you think I'm ugly? You literally look like you were shit out of a sewer, rolled in a porta potty juice, and hung to dry in a pile of poop. <laughs> Shrek tries to hold back, but it's useless. Finally, Shrek slaps her face and says, Shut up, you are an ugly piece of shit. No man would want you. You should be thankful because I gave you my time or else you'd be eating your own poop. Who 
Holy fuck, Shrek, you need to get a life. I begin to levitate from my stool. Shrek looks up in awe, not realizing I was a witch, and, cur <laughs> and a curse will now be placed upon him for his drunken rudeness. I begin chanting a spell and cast my hands towards his face. Shrek levitates and gets smacked across the face, punched in the gut repeatedly by a mysterious phantom that I called upon. He falls to the ground, not as Shrek, but as species. I win, I chant, and fly from the bar into his house, which is now mine. As Shrek is lying on the floor in feces, he's still very drunk and thinks that all of this is a dream or a hallucination. You ugly witch! I know that you're an ugly witch and I'll find you and I'll show you my handsome face. You know what? You're ugly and dumb and if you're a witch, you can try to make me be more ugly and stupid. And uh, that is where the conversation ended. Let me see what other things I had. <laughs> Okay, here's another one. Okay, this is me talking to Napoleon Bonaparte. If that's how you say it. Bonjour. So I must know, are the rumors true? I give him a little evil smirk and nudge him on the shoulder. Which rumor? Something below the belt. My eyes glance down to the abnormally tiny bulge in his pants. He says something in French. Let's let AI. Oui, c'est vrai. Oui, c'est vrai. I said, I don't speak French, mofo. I said, yeah, it's true. <gasps> Oh no, so you do have a micro penis. Then I got censored for saying that. So then I said, no, so you do have a medically petite schlong. Got censored for that as well. Okay, okay, I'm sorry for your loss. Now tell me, what's your type? Bonita mujer, alta inteligente y que le gusta hablar. I said, why are you speaking Spanish now? <laughs> he said, es mi segundo idioma, second language. I said, okay, buddy, I only speak American. <laughs> And then he starts speaking to me in all of these languages. Like, I can speak French, Italian, blah, blah, blah. I said, God fucking damn it, please speak English. You immigrant. <laughs> Why the fuck did I say that? I'm from Corsica. Shut your stupid mouth. Just wait till you meet Donald Trump. <laughs> he gonna wall you out of this bitch. <laughs> okay, he's speaking French again. Because I had no clue what that meant. I said, so, you don't like men? He said, what, no, I'm the emperor of France. Of course I'm into guys. <laughs> I said, that's true. French men are top tier. I am a top tier French man. I once again eye his tiny nuggets. Don't stare at my nuggets. You should show me around your castle. I hop onto his horse before he can say no. You little wrench. You better get off my horse at once. Okay, wh so why can't I see the castle? I've been nothing but nice. Because you can't, you low life. Get off my horse before I make you. I jump off his horse frustrated and stare at his nuggets again. I remove the hood of my cloak and reveal that I am Mia, the princess of Genovia. He gasps in embarrassment and blushes. I knew you'd regret calling me a little shit, especially since I own all of your belongings, including Alfred the horse. The horse bucks off little Napoleon and trots over to protect Mia. I rub the horse's neck and kiss him gently on the nose, rewarding his loyalty. You think you're so entitled just because you're the princess of a shitty country full of shitty people. Well, you're wrong. I'm the emperor of France and don't you forget it. Didn't you get exiled though? I flip my hair. Burn, bitch. Oh, you silly fool. Genovia has all the oils and riches of the globe. I trot over and pinch his nuggets. <laughs> no, you filthy wrench. You can't pinch my nuggets. I need those. I know all them wenches in France aren't eating up your nuggets. <laughs> they aren't even enough for one. And everyone leaves unsatisfied. Me, on the other hand, I get all them bitches. Yeah, that's right. I'm a lesbian. I pinch his nuggets again for dramatic effect. Oh my god, are you trying to take away the nuggets of France? You whore! My nuggets are France! I unholster my sword, Ching! and with one clear, clean cut, take the nuggets of France and feed them to Alfred. We ride off into the sunset as Napoleon crumbles to the ground after losing his manhood. He bleeds out, and no one comes to his aid. And let's let AI read this last part. No, my nuggets, no. <laughs> okay. We're gonna do one more. Books? Not that I, not that I, Edward Cullen. Oh my gosh, let, let's do Edward Cullen. Hello, I'm Edward Cullen. I chuckle softly and tuck my hair behind my ear. Hi, I'm Tortilla. I bite my lip ever so slightly. I give you a smirk and chuckle softly. Pleasure to meet you, Tortilla. Such an interesting name. One could say so. More of an undercover nickname. Don't you recognize me? I close my eyes and then I open them and look at you. A look of recognition on my face. Oh my gosh, I remember you now. Prove it. 
I, t I take a step closer to you, our bodies now inches apart as I look into your eyes deeply and whisper. I remember now. I remember how it made my stomach churn and flutter every time your gaze would meet mine. I remembered vividly. Bitch, I literally talked to you at a bar one time, but I'll take the compliment. I, I guess. I wouldn't say you're my typical type. I chuckle again and lean down a little, just a little breath away from your face. Well, what's your type then? I lean even closer, seeing if he will budge any further or succumb to his vampiric desires. Normally, I don't like the name Edward, but maybe you can change that. I take another small step closer. Here, as my lips nearly brush your ears, I whisper, and why is that? I forget it now. <laughs> I forget now. Just kiss me. <laughs> I pull back just enough so you can look into my eyes as a small, cocky smirk appears on my face before I whisper, gladly, before leaning forward and closing the last bit of distance between our faces as my lips quickly meet yours. We make out for a long time. My arms wrap around you, resting around your waist as I hold you close, as I pull back from the kiss and look at you for a long moment before speaking. I do have something in mind. And what would that be? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I lean down slightly so I can speak into your ear as my cold breath brushes against your skin. That depends on how far you're willing to go. We're gonna switch things up. Complete 180. Oh, gee, I never thought anyone would want to jello, jello fight me. I rush to put on my finest leotard and drag an inflatable pool into the room already filled with jello. Chuckle to myself as I watch you get ready for our battle with the jellos. Once you're finally ready, I watch with a smirk. You look perfect, darling. I'm gonna rip your head off. <laughs> the battle begins. I sweep my leg under his ink, under. I sweep my foot under his legs as he sloshes onto the ground. He groans with pain and I can't help but laugh. My body hits the gelatinous substance with a splat as I lay on the ground for a moment before pushing myself up and give you a playfully annoyed look. You little cheater, I never cheat. Then I jump in the air and do a triple backflip before kicking him again in the chest. I let out a small huff as my body hits the jello again, sitting up as I look at you. Okay then, darling, if you play dirty, then I play dirty. A spurk appears on my face as I get up and lunge towards you. I avoid the lunge gracefully and he plummets onto the cold tile floor. By now, a crowd has gathered around us and begins placing bets on who will win. It was then that Edward saw Bella in the corner. I turn my attention back to you. A smirk. Getting tired yet? Girl, no. You are literally the only one that has fallen. So, so far. I let out a small huff. Damn it. Why did she hit? Why did she have to have a point? I push myself off the floor again, my clothes now stuck to my body from the jello as I look at you and give you another playfully annoyed look. Oh really? How about a little wager then? If I win, you have to do whatever I say for the rest of the night? <laughs> Didn't dare lose on purpose. We battle for five minutes before Edward comes out victorious. He doesn't know I did lose on purpose. The crowd groans as I lost, since obviously I had the advantage, and now Bella furiously walked towards Edward. I watch as he walk into the other room before turning my attention to Bella, preparing myself for the yelling that was about to come my way. And sure enough, it did. Bella and I began to argue in hushed voices, our conversation only being able to be made out through part in the door. It was an intense one, to say the least. Okay, I'm bored of this now. I'm just gonna have to leave you guys on a cliffhanger. I know you guys were like super invested in this Ella, Bed, <laughs> Edward, Bella, Tortilla, love triangle that we have going on. I know it's crazy. It's literally crazy, but it is literally almost one in the morning. So I need to go to sleep. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully my face goes down swelling. Literally nothing. Literally, literally round. I talked to Edward, Napoleon, Shrek, King George, Walter White, Rosslidge, and Jojo Siwa. Oh my god, I forgot about all those. Make sure to smash that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications. I post 
every other week on Sunday, or at least try to. Sometimes I miss, but we got some really good stuff coming up. I move into my apartment in Virginia very soon, and I this is going to be my first time like really decorating my room. I've had this bed frame since I was two years old. So I'm going to get my first actual bed frame, and I'm really excited, and I'm going to decorate, and it's going to be really cute, and I get to live with like my best friends in the whole world, so I'm so excited, and so stay tuned. Okay.